Hello everyone and welcome to this series on hand calculations. Today we're going to be starting with a brief introduction to hand calculations, what they are, and uh, what they represent. So we can start off first with what a hand calculation actually is. And in essence, it's a simplified way to calculate the dose to a patient given some arbitrary treatment geometry. And the hand calc itself makes a few assumptions. One is that dose is calculated in water with a flat surface. Another is that charge particle equilibrium or transient charge particle equilibrium conditions are met along the beam path. And in addition to those assumptions, the dose is uh, assumed to be divided into three parts. You have contribution from primary dose. You also have contribution from the collimator scatter, which you account for with the collimator scatter factor. And you also get contribution from the phantom scatter factor, which you account for with the phantom scatter factor. So all of that generally makes sense, but it's a little unclear what we're actually doing when per we're performing one of these hand calculations. And what we're really doing is we're taking a known point dose and we're applying some series of correction factors to that known point dose to get a new point dose in some new treatment geometry. And the known point dose that we are altering is often established during the commissioning process and um, is also called the calibration condition for the given linear accelerator. And this is an example of the geometry that I'm referring to. So on the left here, you can see we have some known point dose where the X is marked there. So we know the dose rate at that point. We know that the linear accelerator is delivering one centigrade per monitor unit at that point at a depth of D ref, a field size of R ref, and a source to surface distance of SSD ref. And essentially what we're doing when we perform a hand calc is we are converting that point dose to the point dose we see on the right, which is at a new depth with a new field size and a new SSD. So that is in essence what we're doing when we're performing a hand calculation. But what kinds of data do we actually need to perform one of these calculations? Well, I mentioned a few already, but often many factors go into the calculation, such as the percent depth dose, tissue maximum ratio, the collimator and phantom scatter factors. You might need an inverse square factor or an off axis ratio a wedge factor, a tray factor, and these are the main components that go into a hand calculation, and I will cover these in detail in subsequent videos. Um, but for now, this is all I have, and I'll see you in the next video.